What's up, everyone? It's Thursday, January 16th, and we are live at 5 here at Broadway.com headquarters. Oh, headquarters. In the heart of Times Square. Mm. In the famous Brill Building. These are all different various <laughs> lines we use. Just mixing it up. Good job. Uh, in the middle of January, okay. on a cold day in New York City, I'm Paul Wontorek. <laughs> I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we talk about the inheritance often here at Broadway.com because we love it. Yeah. One of our top five shows of 2019, Correct. by the way. So get your tickets. Uh, and today we have Jordan Barbour here Woo! from The Inheritance, yes. one of the amazing ensemble of actors. I'm yes. super excited to talk to him. And he has a great print shirt on, which I love too. I love bold choices. We love a pattern. He loves bold fashion choices. We're going to talk about that <laughs> and a lot more. But first, today's top five. Some of our stage faves are helping bring in this world premiere musical on the Broadway. Yes, we are talking about Flying Over Sunset. Which I'm so curious about. It's got a great premise. The LSD musical. The LSD musical. <laughs> Sure. Uh, Erica Henningsen, the star of Meeting Girls ah. and our former Broadway.com vlogger, is joining the cast and along with... Former, former Broadway.com star, star of, of the year. year. <laughs> Don't want to leave that out. Bag. As well as Jeremy Kushner, who ah. we love. Yep. And Emily P Pinenberg, Michelle Ragusa, Robert Sella, Laura Shoup, and Atticus Ware. Cool. It's, it's a very shiny cast. They're joining the previously announced Carmen Cusack, Tony Yazbek, and Harry Haddon Payton. Mm -hmm. So, do you want me to tell you what's about again? Should we yeah, go yeah, over this? Yeah, celebrities and LSD. Celebrities and LSD. I don't need to say anything else. You just you just nailed it. Uh, it's a work of fiction. Just I'm going to put that out there. Inspired by the lives of three real life people: Claire Booth Blues, who's Carmen Cusack, film legend Cary Grant, Tony Yazbek, and writer Aldous Huxley, who will be played by Harry Haddon Payton, and each of whom experimented with a drug. Right. So that part LSD. is not fictional. They actually they actually did. did. I didn't know Cary Grant did LSD. But this is a work of fiction. Okay, We're going to sing about but, it. But We're okay. going to fly <laughs> but over But don't sunset. we have more to say about Erica Henningsen? Erica Henningsen, who's currently in Mean Girls, original star of Mean Girls, and of course our vlogger with To Gruel for School, will uh -huh. do a final vlog for us to cool. say goodbye because she's awesome. She leaves the show on February 22nd, and the vlog will be right before that. So look cool. out for that. Uh, Flying Over Sunset begins previews on March 12th and opens on April 16th. Mm -hmm. And we got even more casting for the upcoming Plaza Suite. Yeah, so Plaza Suite is in full swing. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick are heading to Boston. I believe they're in rehearsals now. And then the show will start up in Boston. And then it'll come to New York uh, and start previews March 13th at the Hudson Theater. And, so, and of course, John Benjamin Hickey is directing the fantastic uh, former and future star of The Inheritance. <laughs> He's taking a break to do the show. Um, and we found out that joining them are Danny Bolero, Molly Ranson, and Eric Weingant. Weingant? Weingant. Um, they play like, you know, bellhops, porters, hotel types, and hotel other types. characters. Because it's about, because obviously... It's all in the plaza suite. SJP and Matthew Broderick, it's all set in one um, hotel room, like that HBO show I like. Uh, it's, this is an older version of the same idea. Mm -hmm. And they, they play different uh, couples with some love issues and... It's, it's a lot of fun because it's Neil Simon. And uh, yeah, so it's a great cast. I'm actually going to go to Boston to see this because I can't wait till March. So there you go. I'll be there. Very exciting. This reunion just continues to get even sweeter. Oh, we're talking about the Ragtime reunion. Can you believe, oh. can you believe it's been that long? What is that? That's going to be So good. it's April 27th mm -hmm. at the Minskoff Theater. So mark your calendars. We already knew that Audra McDonald and Brian Stokes Mitchell, who of course were in the original cast, um, will be reprising their roles for the special benefit. Now we know that Peter Friedman, oh, who played Tata, Tata, will join them. And this is dedicated to the memory of Marin Maisie, who was, of course, in the original cast as mother. Tata, you know, he fell in love with her every Are night. Are you going to ruin that for people? Sorry, spoiler. Are they going to get Leah? They've had a few. Do you think, do you think Leah Michelle me. will reprise her role as a little girl? Leah Michelle? Deep no, cut, I don't think cut. you should plan on that. And actually. anyway. It does, you know what? Whoever joins, it's going to be wonderful because these three are in it, so it's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. April 27th at the Minskoff. Leah Michelle, do it. Do it, yeah. Leah. Into it. We know she watches. Yes, and these stage icons are coming together to help bring this new musical to the stage. So, finally, we have an LSD musical coming, and we finally have a musical about bedwetting. Perfect. Perfect. Because we've The world has this. been waiting for a while. The world has been waiting. <laughs> for right. both. This is The Bedwetter, based on comedian Sarah Silverman's best-selling memoir that I actually read. I don't read as many books as Beth. 
And I usually didn't read that one. Like, I read that. Or Ryan Lee Gilbert's like read everything. Yeah, yeah. we're readers. But I actually read this. Um, <laughs> and they made a musical out of it. And now we found out, you're going to love this, Stephanie J. Block, Tony winner Stephanie J. Block, and Tony winner Linda Lavin wow. are, are joining uh, the show. This is super exciting. Of course, Stephanie J. Block just finished, not that, I mean, just, you know, recently, Cher. She's still, I'm assuming she's good now. The Cher Show. The Cher Show. She played Cher in the Cher Show. Uh, and she won, what was it called? Star? Was it, which one was she? She was, yeah. Do we remember this Cher Yeah, yes. We do, <laughs> don't we? It was Lady. Lady. No, that was Donna Lady. Summer. Lady. Wait, what? Was there was no duckling be... in <laughs> that was the Donna Cher. Donna. Duckling, Lady. Don, Diva Donna. There was no Cher. duckling what, Cher. What was the Cher? Star? Lady, Star, and Babe. Babe. Lady. Okay, Lady, Lady and Babe. babe. <laughs> Sorry, she was Star. Can you believe Sorry. this? <laughs> she was also in Falsettos, Mystery of Edwin Drood, and Linda Lavin. Speaking of Neil Simon, I mean, she was in Broadway Bound and won a Tony, and she was so great in that. Uh, she was also, I, I grew up with her on, on Alice, the, the the sitcom Alice, and she was in a lot of Neil Simon plays, Last of the Red Hot Lover. She was in The Diary and Frank, Taylor the Allergist Wife, Collective Stories. Anyway, she's fantastic. So this musical is written by Joshua Harmon of Significant Other, Notoriety, and Sarah Silverman together, and music by Adam Schlesinger, who did uh, the Crybaby musical. With lyrics by Sarah Silverman. So Sarah Silverman is really involved in this. Yeah. She didn't just say, here's my book about bad wedding, make a show out of it. She's involved. <laughs> um, and it's the story of a 10-year-old with a secret. Wanna now, guess what just the to secret clarify, <laughs> yeah, and if you read the title of the show, you might know <laughs> the secret. But the 10-year-old is not played by Stephanie J. Block, just to be clear. They have a child oh, playing this okay. role. I okay, just want to cool. be clear about that. Uh, this is all happening off-Broadway for now. Maybe it'll move. Uh, at the Atlantic Theater, April 25th through June 14th. And audiences are going to be able to wine and dine off Broadway with this new experience. experience. I love a wine and dine experience. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Sideways, oh. which was a movie. It was I a book and it was that. a movie. And this is called Sideways, the experience. Like Mamma Mia, the experience <gasps> over Kind in of, but less about dancing to ABBA and more about drinking wine. And if you remember the movie Not Merlot, more All Pinot I remember Noir. about it is Not Merlot, wine. Pinot Noir. Oh, yeah, see, <laughs> it's... Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. Rex Pickett made, uh, did the stage adaptation of the novel, of his novel. He wrote it. Oh. Uh, Dan Wackerman is directing the production, and this will play at Theater at St. Clement's starring February 20th through April 12th. We have casting. We have casting. Uh, Jill Brady will play Jack. In the movie, that was Thomas Hayden Church, and Brian Ray Norris will play Miles, the very cranky central character in the movie played by Paul Giamatti. Right. <laughs> There cool. You go. And so then you, do you get wine? You get wine. I'm confused. You get to dine and is wine. Is it it's unlimited kind of... wine? Oh, well, I... We, we don't know. Okay. We don't You'll know. It just says immersive wine and food event. You know what? Don't drive home after you see Sideways the Experience. Just it's dinner take theater. A, just take, a, take an Uber. Um, also, we have photos mm -hmm. of... I prefer Lyft. Of, or Lyft. That's not a sponsor, by the way. That's just... Unless just you don't want drive. it to be Lyft. Like <laughs> don't drive. Logo. Don't get behind the wheel. my phone. Uh, my name is Lucy Barton. Opened last night. Hey. Yes, sorry, Laura Lenny. Broadway, Laura Lenny. We have some photos of that. Um, we have a nice feature about Antonio Banderas. You know, Antonio Banderas is, of course, not only a Broadway <laughs> vet. Yes. He's also to an Oscar nominee now for the fantastic Pedro Almodovar movie. I learned how to say his name when I finally met him. Ooh. I always said Almodovar. During Woman on the like Verge? Just like I always said Jordan Barber until like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Jordan Barbour. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but we actually, and now he's doing a course line. In right. Spanish, well, he he's playing started Zach. A, he started a theater company. Yeah. So anyway, Beth, it's a whole feature about um, his theater background. We're yes. doing a whole series of features about Oscar. Right? I think we need to go to Spain and see him in a Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we need to um, book that. And um, who got their uh, caricature? Damon Duano. Damon Duano of Oklahoma! Oklahoma exclamation, exclamation point. point. <laughs> <gasps> We've been working together way, 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 way too long. Way too long. Okay, Beth. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, James get out of here. Barbour is here. Good to see you. Thank you. Hey, Caitlin, tell everyone yeah. about today's guest. Yes, guys, we got Jordan Barbour here with us in the studio today. He is currently in The Inheritance on the Broadway. He's playing young man number six and the scene-stealing Tristan. He has a very excellent monologue as Tristan, you guys. This marks his Broadway debut, but he's been working. He's been hustling. He knows what's going on. Make sure you guys follow him. You can follow him at Jordan Barbour one on Twitter or Jordy Boy NYC on Instagram. Come on. That's fun. Leave all of your questions in the comments down below. And please welcome Jordan and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Yay. Hi, Jordy Boy. Hi. Jordy Boy. <laughs> uh, how's it going? It's going very, very well. 
So, you know, you work really hard and you dream of being on Broadway and now mm-hmm. you're there. And now I'm so here. So now what? Like, how, how's it feel? You're a few months in? You know, it's I'm in that phase now where it's like the rush and excitement of it is sort of starting to settle. Yep. And it's sort of like... Now, it's sort of like whenever you get any sort of exciting new job, the reality of it being a job eventually takes over. Sure. And I got to check in and go to work every day. We just had a put in rehearsal. So oh. uh, we're, you know, we have some understudies going in for okay. a couple things here and there. Um, so the, it's certainly not drudgery, but the yeah. work of it is just starting to take over. And, um, you know, uh, there are moments when I'm sort of, feeling a little out of it or I'm feeling tired or I'm feeling frustrated and then I have to just sort of remind myself that I am on Broadway right now. Yeah. And you know, I was trained as a singer actually, so I always thought my way to Broadway you was played the be, whiz and the whiz. You got to sing to do that. Research. They want to see the whiz. Do you have any under the shields in your Was there any oh, under the shields? Yeah, oh yeah, there was a lot of it. I gave all the sass I could. Obviously, I can't <laughs> compare to Andre Shields, but um, I did my best. Um, so but you yeah, trained as a singer. I trained as a singer, so that was actually how I thought uh, I was going to sort of make my way onto right. the Broadway. And then uh, this incredible play showed up on my doorstep. And after a very long audition process, mm-hmm. I was able to get in. And now I'm on Broadway in one of the coolest plays I think I've ever done. One thing I love about this, the way the show starts is uh, it's a stage full of you guys. You, mm-hmm. you all sort of wander on stage yeah. to, before the show starts. So if you do that, I always do my Playbill Instagram photo. You, you guys will be in the background of the <laughs> Instagram photo. Yes. Um, and it, it's sort of, so you're sort of on stage talking and, and the, the the way that the show is directed brilliantly by Stephen Daldry, mm-hmm. you're sort of on stage a lot. There's a, there's a whole group of you sort of circling, literally circling the stage, kind watching the, the action. Yeah. So it must be a nice way to, when you're, maybe not in the right head to start the show. It must be a really great way to sort of ease ease into it. Absolutely. And feed Absolutely. Off your, I mean, feed off your co-stars. There there are certainly days when you go in and you're like, I don't want to do the play today or I'm tired or something like that. And then I get on that stage with my fellow actors and you're sort of just reminded that you're there to tell a story and you do your best to leave everything that you're bringing with uh, yeah. off the stage. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Like it's... It, we also do a really great group warm up every day, oh, what's so it's that a really like? ni- it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like theater games that we would play oh, like fun. in high school. Okay, um, and it's nice because I haven't actually done it since I was on tour many years ago. Uh, so it kind of reminds you that at the end of the day, this is an ensemble that's here to tell this story, and we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. At the risk of quoting High School Musical, uh, <laughs> that is High School Musical, right? Okay, right. good, good. Um, <laughs> my nephews would kill me otherwise, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's a cool reminder of, of the fact that this is a communal experience and the yeah. storytelling that we do is that of a group. Mm. And it's it's a really nice way to begin the next three and a half hours that I will be sitting on that stage. Um, and yeah, it's really lovely just being up there with those with that amazing cast. You must also just know each other really well because we you do. just you're just <laughs> a, a, across from each other yeah. a lot of hours yeah. in the day. Yeah, and people, you know, there's a lot of time where we are uh, talking to each other on stage, yeah. and people ask us, "Are you are you like making it up, or are you just mm-hmm. saying the same things over and over?" And it's like, no, literally every day we are just talking to each other because St- one of Stephen's directions was he. There's this very fine line in the show between like the characters that we're playing um, for me is Tristan, yeah. and then we have these sort of like generic wash of characters that we're playing, each called like a young man. Yeah. So I'm young man six, right. and then when we're sitting on the sides, we are also I'm also Jordan Barbour. So it's a really nice mm. opportunity to like. If I'm on stage with Kyle Harris and he's playing Young Man Seven, sometimes we're interacting as Young Man Six and Young, young Man Seven, but sometimes we're just interacting as Kyle and Jordan. I didn't realize Jordan, Jordan Barbour was in it too. Oh, he's always in it. He <laughs> never leaves. He's always there. Um, yeah, so it's it's cool that like uh, I actually just get to be alive yeah. on stage, which you know, admittedly, especially for part one. Part one is three and a half hours. Yeah. And I am really only in two scenes of part one, and I'm only off stage for one scene. Wow. So it's a lot of time to just sort of be sitting there. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, uh, I'm not always successful at this, but really trying to engage and really trying to be present and listen actively. And um, what helps out with that is this amazing group of actors that I have yeah. on stage with me. So if there's ever a moment where I feel like I'm losing it or I feel like I'm falling out, all I need to do is look across stage at 
DJ Daughtry who's mm -hmm. smiling at me or giving me some sort of wink and I'm sort of brought back. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a really lovely, um, you know, brotherhood with the addition of Lois. Uh, Lois uh, <laughs> legend. <laughs> legend, um, Lois, yeah. legend. But it's a really nice uh, sort of fraternity that we're in on mm -hmm. that stage. And we plumb some pretty intense emotional depths yeah. in this show. And so you really want to be on the stage with people that you trust and love and one of the really lovely things about this show as you said is that we've gotten to know each other really well really quickly um and like any brotherhood you have your days where you don't love people all the time right. you have your days where you are madly in love with people um and you know uh it's just a really great group of people to share the stage with every day i'm glad i consider myself very lucky so let's talk about opening night okay i was there yes you were um you made Quite an entrance. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Kyle, why don't you put that oh, photo God. up? What? Let's talk. You wore you. Are, wow, Grace Jones walked in. <laughs> you, you walked into that party, and I said, "Wow." Okay, <laughs> let's let's talk about the look, where that came from, what you were going for. It was fantastic. Thank you very but, much. Uh, but I, I'm really curious about where where it sort of came from. Okay, well, I uh, I have this sweater that is actually one of my favorite sweaters that people say looks like chainmail whenever I wear it. Okay. And they're like, oh, I get this compliment a lot. They say, like, you kind of look like you should be a knight or something like that. <laughs> and so I was going through looks and different outfits, and I don't, sadly, I don't have the budget to get, like, ridiculous uh, designer outfits or anything like right. that, and nobody's knocking on my door right. asking if they want me to wear their... Yet. Yet. Oh, yes, <laughs> yet. Um, so I was just like, you know what? You only... You literally only get one Broadway debut in your yeah. entire life. Yeah. I hopefully will have many more shows in my life, many more yep. Broadway shows in my life, but this will be the very first Broadway debut I have. And so why not really make a statement and uh, try and be as as much as Jordan as I possibly can uh -huh. be while still being respectful to the room and to the yeah. group and to you know I don't it's not my intention to overshadow anyone no. and I, I, I really well, there are a lot of great outfits the amazing cast outfits. Looked amazing. oh my god yeah. we were killing it, wasn't it just you we were killing it <laughs> um, but anyway I, I saw this I, I had the sweater and I was like oh maybe I'll buy like a really nice sweater that's like a uh -huh. chainmail look and then I went on the Amazon and I was like why don't I actually just look up a chainmail shirt and see yeah. what that's like. And actually, the <laughs> I probably shouldn't admit this, but like the uh, jacket that I was wearing, the blue jacket, was cut from the show. Uh, oh. It was what my character was supposed to be wearing in Toby's opening night, and it got cut from the show. Okay. And I begged and begged and begged <laughs> to uh, for them to sell it to me, and it was a long back and forth, and finally they sold it to oh, me. Oh, okay. Um, and so I was like, okay, I was getting the look together, and I was like, I really like this shirt, and I like this jacket. And then when I went to click on the uh, chainmail shirt, yeah. it had the chainmail hood or quaff, I guess it's called, and I was like, you know what? Let if I'm gonna go big, that's already, what was on your the, head. Yeah, that's what it's that's called. What okay, like, the chainmail quaff. <laughs> um, so I just decided, you know what? I I I want to wear this, and I want to be as fabulous and yeah. glamorous. And for a play like The Inheritance, yeah. it felt appropriate. Sure. And, um, you know, the best moment of my life was when Glenn Close came up to me and hugged me and said, "You look fabulous." Uh, <laughs> there you go. I was like, "I can, I can die now. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it." Uh, so, so Amazon is the answer. I was hoping you were going to say Lois Smith loaned it to me. <laughs> no, no, not, not true. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. But I'm sure she has something way more fabulous than the chain that I was wearing. But. So, uh, you are an out actor. I am. Let's talk about what this this show means to you. It means a lot to me, mm -hmm. this show. Um, as a performer, getting the opportunity to be a part of, and obviously it came to New York with a lot of weight from London. Everyone said, this is sort of an important show. And mm -hmm. it's really interesting because I, feel, I don't want people to get turned off by that in any way because mm -hmm. you, it's such an um, engaging, mm -hmm. easy to watch show. And it's it really like pulls you in and it's really beautifully told. And you know it's been compared to like a Netflix series, which is a very... I think a fair comparison. I yeah. just flew through all the episodes, <laughs> binged it, binged the inheritance. Um, but the emotions in it, uh, you know, and and there, there are these plays that come along that that are working on a whole other level, yeah. and you kind of know you're making history. So, what 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 does it mean um, to be up on that stage, doing this show? You know, uh, I feel like the magnitude of of being in the original Broadway cast of this show uh, hasn't quite hit me yet. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's one of those things that's going to require time. And yeah. it's mm -hmm. one of those things that, you know, uh, hopefully it won't 
take 50 years, but you know, it's one of those things that I think I, I will look back to in retrospect and be like, wow. It yeah. is, it, I mean, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but I, I think about what the original cast of Rent must have felt like yeah. and being part of this like pivotal, seminal moment in musical theater history and queer history, yeah. queer theater history. Um, and you know, to be able to look back at that, you know, no matter what I do with the rest of my life and the rest of my career, and I, I've had a really lovely career that I'm yeah. extremely proud of. Um, so to have this be the latest thing that comes along in my life is, it's an incredible feeling and one that I don't know has fully hit me yet. Just because of exactly what I was saying when I first sat down, it's still work. It's mm -hmm. a it's a job that mm -hmm. I have to come to every day, and yeah. uh, it, it is tough to sit on the stage for three and a half hours sometimes, and. I think the immensity of what I'm doing and what I get to do hasn't fully hit me. Um, but it, certainly being a queer actor, certainly being a, a queer black actor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, representing a demographic that is sorely underrepresented, and uh, especially on Broadway stages, it feels really powerful. And it's something that I really try not to take for granted. And again, like I said, it's it's going to be the type of thing that is uh, that retrospect will certainly make clearer for me mm -hmm. but i you know when i when i think about what this play is when i think about the fact that it is a seven hour epic play that is about the lives of gay men in new york yeah. at this time you know mm -hmm. it's it takes place just a few years ago and it's not a period piece yet it's not a right. piece that looks back to i mean certainly looks back in what it does mm -hmm. but it's not a piece that like takes place in the 60s or it takes place in right. another era it's it's telling a story during a time in my life that is very uh, important and powerful mm -hmm. and, and formative. Yeah. And to be able to actually play out what my character is going through and be age appropriate for it yeah. um, at a time when I was that age, when I am the age, it feels like this incredible sort of, uh, almost like a documentary of what I'm actually experiencing in my mm. life right mm. now. And, you know, the what I love about our, our first day of rehearsal, Matthew sat us down and said, the word epic is getting thrown around, around a lot. Right. This is being sh being said to be this like really huge, powerful piece of theater, which it is. But at the end of the day, what we're doing, Matthew said this, he's like, we're doing a silly little comedy. We're mm -hmm. doing a fun little comedy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he was downplaying the right. importance right. and relevance of what the play was. And I think what he was trying to elucidate for us was the idea that at the end of the day, we're not here playing iconic characters. Right. We're not up here playing... Right these moments in history or whatever, right. we are actually just playing people. And that as much truth and life that we can bring to it, just being ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, will service the play more than anything we could mm -hmm. possibly do. And so I try not to get too lost in the importance sure. of it, because like I said, I think that's one of those things that time will tell. Um, yeah. History will dictate what this play is, what how it lives in the canon of theater history and queer history. Right. and. Uh, I have no control over what that is, yeah. but the, what I can do is bring my truth to it as a black queer man in now 2020, but the 20 teens when sure. this took place. And, you know, it feels really powerful to get to be a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. I don't can know you, if I answered your question. No, you did, <laughs> and, and more. But a lot of what um, Tristan is going through, yes. it's a lot of political talk in, uh -huh. in the play. Um, uh -huh. There's a lot of things going on in politics, people. <laughs> if you want to change the channel, you can see something happening right now, probably. But um, you, and, and the audience love, you get a lot of reactions. You get to yeah. sort of say a lot of things that we're all thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to be that guy, yeah. <laughs> which must be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's really great. I mean, the, uh, you know, we that ensemble of actors that we are around the stage, we, sadly, we don't, I don't want to say that we don't get an, get much of an arc. We do, yeah. but really we are there to support the main action of the right. story. Um, we're there to act as um storytellers mm -hmm. uh we we literally state narrative throughout the show um what's great being tristan though is that i luckily have a a little arc especially the one that takes yeah. over in part two and it's really exciting to be i think uh someone told me that my character is sort of like the political conscience of the show which mm -hmm. i'm not completely sure if that's true but mm -hmm. what is exciting is that i do get to have all these speeches and have all these moments. I mean, one thing that people have told me after they've uh, come to see me outside of the stage door is they've been saying, you said everything I've been wanting to say for the yeah. past few years. You had all the amazing <laughs> right. monologues where you 
you got to get all the frustration out. And the fact that Matthew wrote my character to be so cool about everything, my character is really level-headed and really well-spoken and really uh, even keeled about everything. I think that allows the audience in to hearing what these arguments are without necessarily there being like ultimate passion or fire and brimstone. You actually get to hear someone sort of level-headedly speak about what it's like living with HIV and being a person of color right. in America right now. Yeah. And um, you know, that responsibility is not lost on me. And the fact that I get to be sort of like the proxy for so many audience members watching the show, it's pretty damn cool. Excuse me, I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm allowed to curse, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really proud that I get to take on that mm -hmm. responsibility and yeah. I hope I'm doing it justice. I you, think are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are, you are, sir. Be. Thank you. You're a Juilliard grad. I'm not. You're not. You went to Juilliard. I studied. I, I did a joint program between okay. Columbia University uh -huh. and the Juilliard School. And at Ooh. Juilliard, I studied classical voice under the tutelage of David Clatworthy. Okay. So basically, while I was pursuing, it's a super long story. Okay. But while I was pursuing my undergraduate degree at Columbia, the way the program is set up is that you can choose to also study. You can choose to complete most of your credits by the end of your junior year, okay. and then switch over to Juilliard. I was really burned out by the end of my second year, okay. so I decided to just stay at Columbia and do my vocal training at Juilliard with David Clatworthy. You dabbled at Juilliard. So I also had to take the juries, you and took, I still had to pass everything. You took everything. pieces of Juilliard. <laughs> I took pieces of Juilliard, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, whatever you did, it worked. Well, thank you're you. You're fantastically talented, and you've done so many shows. Uh, this is your Broadway debut, but your it resume is, is kind of crazy but in, in between amazing classics yeah. and fun musicals like The Wiz. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, you could wear your opening night costume and some reimagine The Wiz. You know, so I... Andre could direct it. I would love that. If you want to talk to him, okay. I will All I right, will gladly cool. support Great. that. Right. I think he would probably just play it again. <laughs> <laughs> and probably. Caitlin. Probably. He would just what take my outfit. On, yeah. you know, what are the people online asking? Yes, definitely. All right, so Amy wants to know what, type, what are the type of conversations that are happening at the stage door? What is the audience reaction? been and meant to you mm -hmm. as an actor in the show? Well, uh, you know, we, we are not only ambassadors of the show, but we are also ambassadors of a really big statement that I think Matthew's trying to say. And so often what we are is, we're often what we, what we have to be is shoulders for people to cry on. I mean, not necessarily literally, sometimes literally, mm -hmm. but uh, mostly what people just tell us is how deeply moved they are, especially mm -hmm. the ending of, that, of part one, which I will not give away, but that is a lot for people to take. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially once they go through the entire experience, what's really cool about the fact that you've just spent seven hours in the theater with people is that you've actually gotten to know us, even those of us who don't speak all that much. And that's one of the things that people say to us after the show is, it, it's so amazing that like, even if, if, there, if this had been a two or three hour play, I would have seen like a cool performance or a cool character. Mm -hmm. But literally the fact that I sat in the theater with you all day and the fact that we're out there on stage for most of the day, there is sort of a kinship that people feel with us. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you know, people tell us about, tell, tell us stories about people that they've lost to HIV and AIDS. Um, they tell us about the emotional journey that they're going on. They wanna know how we're getting through the emotional mm -hmm. journey. Um, and you know, I, I don't know that there's necessarily any single particular thing that people want to talk about with us, but mm -hmm. people, it, it's 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 less about oh you were so great, and it's more about this is what I'm going through right now. And honestly, all of us are happy mm -hmm. to do that. It's kind of a way of leaving it off, this, leaving it on the stage for us, you know, in a way. Do you have cool. a musical dream or all that you would just love to jump into? Cole House. Oh, Cole okay. House. I mean, ragtime, ragtime, ragtime. <laughs> I mean, real talk. I want to play Caroline Thibodeau someday. I can't, obviously, <laughs> or Mrs. Lovett. I obviously can't. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. You know, know. Times they are know. changing. You Times are changing. Yes. Times are changing. But um, <laughs> as far as like what you know is sort of in the canon of work that I could probably do right now, Cole House. Mm. Have you ever it done was, it? I have not. Okay. That was my first uh, Broadway musical. I saw Serafina, but I was terrified the whole time. I, I was six. Serafina. I was six, I saw and Serafina, yeah. I saw the 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 killing at the end of the first at the act. Court and, theater, right over here. Yes. Yeah. And then I spent the entire act, second act like hiding in my mother's lap. I'm sorry. Aww. That's fine. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> ragtime. <laughs> ragtime was the first musical that I saw, and it made me realize that this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, going after that, we can do one more question. And Jaxa wants to know if there was a musical theater icon or show that really informed your decision to want to do this. There it is. Well, Ragtime. Yeah. I mean, uh, Audra McDonald is 
So she went to Juilliard. She's vocally trained. Uh, she's classically trained. She is a black actress who has made this life work. I remember seeing her when I was 14. I saw Ragtime, and it it actually changed my life. I remember calling my mother after it was done because the whole the show that year was Rent. We all wanted to go see Rent, <laughs> and I was so mad because I was part of this musical theater program, uh, this camp that I went to, and they took us to Ragtime. We were I was so pissed. Off. <laughs> and uh, and it's one of those things in retrospect that I'm like, wow, you are crazy for being pissed off at seeing the original cast mm -hmm. in yeah, Ragtime right. the year that it opened. Uh, and I remember after it was done, I called my mother crying, saying, I think I know that this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And you're really so, locked in with Audra. Locked in with Audra. Have she you met is, her? I have seen her outside of stage doors. Oh. I've let her know. I've tried to, to tell her in passing how much I adore her. Oh. But she has uh, unfortunately never uh, been able to have a conversation. Hey, Audra, there's a really good play on Broadway. <laughs> Two parts. It's long, but it doesn't feel long. Nope. And it's I'll hug you afterwards. I will and tell you how <laughs> amazing you are. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. She would love it. You all would love it. Everybody, go see The Inheritance. I'm going to go see it again. I can't help it. I just love it so much. Yay. Uh, thank you for coming in, Jordan Barbour. Thank you. My thank pleasure. Thank you for teaching me how to say your name. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. And you can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Talk to Leslie Margarita of the new musical Emojiland.